So I have my virtual machine on the left here, I have my notes on the right hand side. I just want to go through the integer overflow uh, side of this laboratory. So I've got some code uh, that you can have a look at um, and that is uh, int overflow.c. Here is my int overflow.c file um, and what I'm declaring is an integer value called i which is equal to 2 and then I'm setting up a loop that is going to loop as long as the value of i is greater than 0 uh, and because I enter this loop with the value of i equal to 2 I satisfy that condition I then make i equal to i times i uh, as i is always going to be positive um, my resulting value will always be positive so this loop should go on forever after I've done my multiplication here I'm actually printing out the value of i so if I compile this, um, I can then run it. And what we see when I run it is that the loop doesn't go on forever. It actually um, stops. And the value recorded uh, as being the value of my integer at the time when it stops is the value of 0, which goes against the logic uh, of the code that I've just written. So I'd like to demon or I'd like to say or show why that why that is the case. Um, if we just follow the logic of the program so far, so i is equal to 2, 2 times 2 is 4, we print out that value. 4 times 4 is 16, we print out that value. 16 times 16 is 256, we print out that value. 256 times 256 is 65,536. Multiply that by itself and you end up with quite a large number. What is reported is 0. So what's happened is we've run out uh, of the capacity uh, to store our integer because the number that we want to store is greater than, in this case, is greater than 32 uh, bits in size, is greater than 4 bytes in size. Um, and because of the starting value that I've chosen, I happen to go 4, 16, 2, 5, 6, 5, 536, and I go 0, um, which is a little bit odd. I can actually go through and change my starting value. So let's change my starting value to being equal to uh, 7. Um, let's go back recompile that, rerun it, and see what happens. So I end up with 7 times 7, uh, 7 cubed, um, 7 to the 4. I then end up with this negative number being reported because my integer value by default uh, is a signed value. So I end up having a negative value here, and of course because we're less than 0, or because we're not greater than 0, um, we break out of our while loop. So what I'm asking uh, is to run the program, so so you can see this happen. Then I'd like you to use GDB to look at the memory to identify what is happening uh, when the integer overflows. So in this case, we have um, we have an overflow here. Uh, we actually have uh, interesting enough numbers being wrapped around here. So uh, let's have a look at the very first case, and that means that I need to go back and just edit. Uh, my initial value for i because I think it's important to see what happens when we have uh, that value. Let's recompile it, open it up in GDB. Um, and then I can have a quick look at the program code. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint in just after our, um, our change of the i value. So if I put a breakpoint in at line 10, uh, I can then run my code. I'm interested in finding out what the memory address uh, of my i variable uh, stores. So let's print out where that memory address is. Let's have a look at that memory address plus, um, well, let's do four plus four other memory addresses. I'm a bit lazy to type that out, so I'll just copy and paste that. All we can see here is, uh, well, we've run the program and on running the program we have our i value equal to 2 so we have 2 times 2 is equal to 4 so we have 4 being stored and this is a memory address so these are 4 bytes so this is one byte here this is another byte this is another byte and this is another byte and bear in mind that gdb is going to represent that to us as a hexadecimal number so I have 4, it's exactly what I expect. If I continue my program, I should have that 4 printed out. I then have another value, so I have 4 printed out, that's great. Let's have a quick look at what I've got in my memory address. Well, 4 times 4 is 16, so I have 1 in my 16 uh, to the 1 column. If I continue that, 
Uh, I then have 16 printed out. Let's have a look, see what we've got here. So I've got one in my uh, 16 to the two column. Um, if I continue that, uh, we'll print out what we've got in the memory address. So I have one in my 16 to the one, 16 to two, 16 to three, 16 to four, one in my 16 to the four column. Um, and then if I go through again, so I continue, print out what I got in my memory address. So this time I've got 256, so that is equal to 256. Now I've got zero. And what's happened is 256 by 256 should end up with a one in this column over here. But of course I don't have that in order to write it. Um, I'm not overwriting any of my neighboring memory addresses, as, as we'll see in uh, classical buffer overflow. Um, I'm just losing the additional bits of information past the maximum size that has been allocated for my uh, integer. So if we actually go back and have a look, this isn't going to work, or well, it's not going to look quite as pretty um, if I go back and change that to 7 as I had previously. Let's change that to seven. <clears throat> Recompile that. Open it up in GDB and let's do exactly the same thing. So uh, I'm going to put a breakpoint at line 10. I'm going to run this. I'm going to print out uh, whatever variable is at i. I'm going to have a look at that memory address plus a few others. Uh, let's copy and paste that. And I see that I start off with three times 16 which is 48 plus one, there's my 49. If I go continue, I should have my 49 being printed out. Print out what's in my memory address. Okay, so I now have nine times 256 plus 16 times, plus six times 16 uh, plus one. If I continue again, I end up with, so that happens to be equal to 2,401. Print out my memory address while well, I end up with some other numbers here. Let's continue to find out what that's equal to. Uh, that is equal to 5,764,801. Let's continue. And I end up with, <coughs> my apologies, sorry. Um, I end up with this number multiplied by itself being equal to uh, a negative number. And the reason for that being uh, that I happen to have a, a one in my most significant bit, uh, indicating that I should be doing a, a calculation of two's complement. So that's an indication of um, integer overflow. Uh, I gave some examples in the lecture of why this is uh, useful, because it may be that we're able to overflow integers and get other parts of the program code to be executed, particularly if we're able to overflow with large amounts of data um, and we're able to trigger some other memory corruption vulnerability. Thanks for listening.